polluting the environment, and then how does it impact people? You know, there will be consequences if you outuse a resource, if you pollute a resource. Um, and one of the most interesting things when I moved to the DC area for the fellowship program, being exposed to NGOs like the Earth Conservation Corps, uh, which works on the Anacostia River. And one of the most fascinating moments is when I saw people fishing on the Anacostia River. And fishing and um, catching the fish and cooking and eating. And it just raised my you know, eyebrows wondering, you know, is there an understanding of the pollution or the history of the Anacostia River? If there is an understanding, you know, what is being done with the data? You know, are the people, is it, does it have a health impact? These are like all questions that are kind of floating out there. And if it's still evident, like you were saying, with um, the impacts on, in Flint on children, why is nothing being done? Is, does development or does environmental justice initiatives not occur until gentrification occurs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The question is why? And it all boiled down to, again, in the fellowship program, seeing so much policy, seeing all these issues, that to me it boils down to data. Data, education, and cooperation. You have to understand what the problem is. You have to understand what the consequences are. And this is America, they say, innocent until proven guilty. Well, if you can't prove how poor water quality is impacting the health of youth, then you're gonna have a hard time making a difference. So in order to do that, there needs to be you know, more investments in, in data and tracking water quality. A lot of times, you know, government agencies may be stressed with appropriations and they may be able to put it's a water gauge or some type of technology on the Potomac River. What about the Anacostia River? Why they'll have 50 years of data for the Potomac River and five years in two-year increments of the Anacostia River. There needs to be more investment to track this information. And again, I've noticed that uh, government agencies can be limited. Again, you have the federal, state, county, local, each sometimes all competing for, uh, for resources. And so, again, the most powerful thing to me is having the data, having the education system. Again, this is branching out into STEM education. Having the youth exposed to hardcore science. Having, giving them understanding why it's important. Because youth, again, in, in Ward 7 and 8, again, they're interested. They say, oh, we know this water is bad. You know, I wish we could do X, Y, and Z. They have ideas, they have vision. They just need access to education, whether it be, again, it can be master's degrees, PhD degrees, or it can be vocational. The point is giving them access to data, to education, and then the last component, cooperation. There has to be cooperation between, again, government agencies, NGOs, faith-based institutions, faith-based institutions. There has to be cooperation in order to have action. Otherwise, they'll just be crabs in a basket, everybody pulling each other down, trying to get out. But there has to be cooperation in order, again, to prioritize. Okay, there's water quality, there's a problem. Where is the problem occurring? How long has it been a problem? How many families are impacted? You have to be able to write and tell the story. 